Today, every day, small cap investors visit Agoracom knowing this is the day to discover the world's next great company to have their dreams come true. That's why I take to the open road to find them, to tell their stories, to engage them, to bring them to life because they want to connect with you from your office, your phone, your home, anywhere. Agoracom, find your dream. Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives right after they put out important news, and that's why he's smiling. Peter Pascal is with us, present CEO, Pyrogenesis Canada, trades on the Venture Exchange under the stock symbol PYR. I don't know how much longer that's going to be. You're going to, see, you're going to hear my questions on that. And PYR and F for our friends in the U.S., and 8PY for our friends in Europe. Now, for those of you who are new to the story, and that is going to be a lot of you because the company's now got an $800 million mark cap. It's one of the best performing companies of the year by far. And you probably tuning in, you may be tuning in for the first time. So look, in a nutshell, Power Genesis, they're a multiple TSX Venture 50 company. What they do is they're the world leader in advanced plasma processes. We'll talk about that later. But basically taking their plasma torch technology and they're achieving global success on multiple applications. Uh, I've never seen that before out of a small cap company. If a company's had just one of these verticals going at a global success, they'd be ecstatic. Forget about multiple. Uh, that includes a $25 million sale of a contract that involves one of the biggest high-tech aluminum smelters in the world. That contract could expand up to $55 million over the next few years. The company's got a $40 million backlog. And why? Thanks to the press we're going to talk about first. Uh, a contract just signed with the U.S. Navy for $11.5 million for two systems on two aircraft carriers. Peter, welcome back. Congratulations. What an introduction, George. I, I, I don't recognize myself sometimes when you speak about us, but thank you very much. I'll try to live up to your expectations. <laughs> hey, you, you've earned it, man. That's for sure, right? The, the, the stuff. That's thank why you. I would say more than just lip service because a lot of small cap companies talk but very few are executing at your, at, 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 your, at your pace. So there are two things I want to talk about. Sure. One is the U.S. Navy contract, and the other one is going to be the iron ore pelletization <laughs> uh, okay. contract. So, but let's start with this one first. Long time coming. Yep. Right? Congratulations. Thank you very How much. big is it to officially get in the down payment of $4.5 million or so and to get the contract uh, signed? Well, it's really, it's really comforting, George, to actually be able to put that to bed. We, we, we were expecting it for over a year now. Yep. Um, we're actually in the design of the U.S. aircraft carrier uh, designs. Uh, we spec that in, and we expected the contract as we announced. And we delivered two systems, George, for those who don't know, we've already delivered two systems in the past. This is, these are two systems associated with the two-build uh, two aircraft carrier that's been uh, um, in the news. Um, I, um, we're very excited about it. As I said, put it to bed. Uh, there'll be some delays, obviously, uh, for one year's worth of delays. Part of it was because we typically were in the, um, the long lead items in the past when an aircraft carrier was or system was ordered. Uh, now what they did was for just in time management, which is smart on behalf of the U S Navy, we were delayed in, in what time they were going to order it. And, and now's the time. And, we nailed it last week and we're very happy to add it to our backlog. Right. Now, George, it's 40 million bucks, roughly $40 million. Uh, our sales in the past have been about five, six, seven million dollars. So it's very significant to add that backlog being signed contracts once again. So very significant. We're very happy to put it to bed. Um, there and, we and I'll tell you why I love it, Peter, that this is the second massive contract that's come in this year that had some delays with it but those delays weren't really delays in they right i mean they're just when you're making sales to massive the biggest you know smelters in in the middle east and the u.s navy on aircraft carriers you just got to wait your turn and sometimes shareholders will get antsy i guess that's the word to say but now i think you've delivered two of these uh yeah. what does that say about the reputation of the company and from let, the investment let, side let, let, let me speak to that for a moment george because somebody asked me that 
earlier today about delays, and, and, and I mentioned it and, and described certain situations. I thought maybe I should repeat it here for, 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 for your followers. And there's delays and there's natural delays. And sometimes when investors are outside looking in, and I get emails, questions, oftentimes, you know, you've got an agreement, why don't you just sign it? They don't realize the things that happen that are natural. And, and, and the example I brought up earlier was, the specific with US Navy, and I'm not talking out of school, but um, what they want to know is whether we had an anti-trafficking policy. You know, anti-trafficking in this sense means, you know, uh, has, has to relate to you know, like child labor uh, or forced labor. And uh, of course, you know, we and a lot of North American, most North American companies don't uh, deal in that type of, uh, deal in that type of uh, environment, but we didn't have a written policy, you know? Uh, and so we, we had to develop a written policy, get it passed by the committee, their, their, by my board and then their committee. And then once it was approved by them as meeting their standards, we had to make sure our, 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 our suppliers also were to adhere to that. And then it had to go through the signature process again. George, it took six weeks just to do that. And, and everyone at home should know that that's yeah. part of, the great part is getting these big contracts, but big organizations it require takes, these things that you, most shareholders don't understand. That's right, it takes time. It's a natural progress. It's, yeah. a, natural, it's a natural discussion. And um, uh, what I would call would be an unnatural delay is if all of a sudden you're, you're delayed because you just don't agree on, on a fundamental principle. Uh, or the economics don't make sense, or or something else happens. I mean, but these are natural delays. It's ongoing. You're getting to the conclusion. Both parties want to conclude a deal. That's what, and any delay associated with that, I call a natural delay. Yeah, and these are two agreements now that have come through. So uh, yeah. you know, I think people can rely on you when you talk about these things are happening. Can I also ask you? Look, you've got multiple applications. This is one of them. But what does this contract, repeat contract, what does this do for Pyrogenesis reputation across all verticals with both its existing customers and what I'm assuming is you've got a lot of prospective customers. We're going to talk about that in Iron Ore, but pers prospective customers in all those verticals. Well, doesn't, this re doesn't this shoot your reputation through the roof for well, you know, who well, your customers are? It, it, it confirms to investors and, and those who like to to, to criticize the, our strategy and the way we do things. It, it most surely gives, gives, our credit, gives our strategy credibility, gives our product line credibility. Um, it, 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 it creates, it de-risks the company. Yep. It creates cash flow. It's a repeat order with a very significant player who has you know, any technology at its disposal, arguably. Uh, we're very proud to be part of the group. We're very proud to have, to have developed the technology which is accepted. And, and um, so it does a lot for the team, for the company. And, and, and I'm assuming it makes conversations a lot easier when you're talking to George Co., you know, some multinational conglomerate about one of the applications of your plasma yeah. torch technology where you can just say, hey, George, don't be concerned. We just passed the due diligence of the U.S. Department right. of Defense and U.S. Navy. Yeah. And you can't get anybody more discerning than the U.S. military. Oh, the the US no Navy. way. So, um, I'm very proud to be part of that team. We all are. All right. So congratulations on that. Thank Congra you great, great accomplishment. Let's move yeah. on to the next one. And I'm going to say this, in my opinion, I think the second part is bigger than the U S Navy. In fact, I'm, I'm going to say it is, but you may disagree, but the second announcement you put out recently, I'm going to read it. Pyrogenesis announces completion and acceptance of modeling contract with iron ore pelletization client a, by the way, we should have a contest for everyone to guess who client A is, because I don't know either. Receives draft contract for equipment purchase. I mean, Peter, that sounds like you're when you're at draft contract stage and you've got it after you completed modeling, this is imminent, no? You want to use that word? That I have imminent? <laughs> <laughs> I am, but you know, we're we're you're pretty much there, right? And there may be delays, natural delays you talk about, but but getting the deal done seems like that part is done. And now you just got to go through well, the natural well, I, clause I, I, and closing I'd, process. I'd be very cautious to say it's done, uh, George. Uh, well, we're, very, we're very excited about it, obviously. We think it's, it's important enough to press release. Uh, effectively, what it is, is we have on paper the agreement to date. 
We have to make sure that it, you know, the, it, it reflects all aspects of our agreement to date. There are other things that, are, that have to be discussed and, 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 um, and uh, agreed to. And here we come to the question of uh, nat nat uh, natural delays, for instance. And again, I spoke to this about earlier. Um, we're supposed to send a team to the site. You know, they're gonna pay for it, obviously. It's in the cost, somewhere, it's somewhere in the cost. How many people are we gonna send? Uh, what type of uh, accommodations? What type of flight? Is it a, a business class? Uh, uh, economy class? Is it in the cargo hold? <laughs> you know, how many people? Uh, how long? Uh, so, obviously, what the client wants to do is minimize costs, and at the same time, what we want to do is make sure we got the right, the right people, and 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 uh, they're, they're they're traveling properly. So there's this thing going back and forth. That's always that's always a natural negotiation. Now, adding COVID, and um, and all of a sudden, people are raising questions. You know, how are we going to deal with this? How are we going to deal with that? And these are questions that have never been um, dealt with. paid in the marketplace. So there's new discussions. Both parties want to come to a conclusion, but we have to figure out the right method. Now, uh, you know, someone raises a question, you scratch your head, you go back, you try and figure out what would be the best way. And, um, and that, those are natural delays, George. I mean, it's not, it's not a question of many people say, you've got an agreement, sign, go ahead, move it, do it. Now, the, um, having said that, again, I don't want to alarm people uh, with respect to COVID and, and this particular client. We can do things remotely. They have an engineering for it. So there's all ways we can get around it. But just to give you an idea that everyone can understand without getting to the particulars, the nitty gritty of what, why things are going back and forth, well, that's a very easy one for people to understand and get their head around. Everybody's living it, right? Uh, so, so these are natural delays. Okay. What I call natural delays where both parties are talking about things with a goal of coming to an understanding and signing. But, we, but, you know, no matter what, and I know you like to be cautious, which is great. So that's come across. But you've got to feel good about the fact that the, the modeling part of, of was, was completed and accepted and you received a draft. That, that, that's good. So having said that, I'm going to ask you a question. How big can this be? And I know you're not going to tell specifics. I'm not going to ask specific. But you have alluded in the past to – potential size of these deals, specifically one of your plasma torch burner, one of your units, it, it would cost about $3 million. And I think you were referring to- Well, no, we didn't, we didn't say cost. We said it would be, it would have generate a revenue stream to us equal to a roughly $3 million. Right, so I meant, to the, I meant to the client. Sorry, I meant oh, to the client. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, my apologies, you're right. So, you know, revenue to you, three gross revenue, you know, $3 million. And that, one particular client could need up to 500 units. I mean, that was when everyone's eyes popped out the other day. So are you able to kind of discuss how big this could be, given the fact that you've already kind of alluded to in the past? What can you shed more light on if you can? Okay. I can't, I can't give you any numbers, and I can't speak for the client. Um, but let me, see, let me try and answer this uh, properly. Our strategy, George, has always been, and I think I articulated here once, slowest, smooth, smoothest, fast. In other words, right. you know, slowest, smooth, and smoothest, fast. And, 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 we, and, and I look at what we did with DrawStrike. And this is, the, this is the philosophy that I have with respect to this type of business, be it DrawStrike, iron ore pelletization, waste treatment system of another sort. Um, particularly when there's multiple systems being ordered in the future. In draw strike, we sold the first one. Now, I can't remember the numbers exactly, but I think it was around $800,000. The second one to the same client was around $1.2 million. The next one was about, our technology was sold for about seven systems for $20 million. Now, had we engaged our first contract was the, the $20 million, which was seven systems. Had we done that first, first, we would not get the same price. Okay. Um, right. You proved and, yourself by going through the first yes. two stages. Now, I can't under, um, underscore enough the importance of doing one system or early, like the draw strike system. 
we learn so much from that. How to reduce costs. Okay, we learn in the first one, whatever challenges, and I don't care what anybody tells you, when you're doing it the first time, no matter how confident you are, no matter how expert you are, you're going to learn a hell of a lot doing it the first few times. For sure. Absolutely. So now keep that in the back of your mind and realize that when you enter into a contract, the client wants it yesterday. Because the reason why they're buying it from you is it's either saving them money or making them money. It's about money. And the sooner they can have it, the better. So no matter whether it's one, two, three, seven draw straight systems, they want it yesterday. So you don't have the time to figure out in the course of manufacturing what is a better way to do it. Understanding this, and again, I can't talk to uh, clients and their perspectives because I don't know it, but if I was them, I'd be trying to lock up a hell of a lot of systems at an introductory price. We, on the other hand, would be looking for the opposite. We'd like to do the most, the minimal amount we can in the beginning to Prove get that. Yeah, because you know what? I'm not in it for this particular, I'm in it for the long term. I'm, I'm sl slow is smooth and smooth is fast. We can get there faster than um, do, going a bit slower. Now, for our French for our French audience, Napoleon said something very similar. He said, dress, dress me slowly, I'm in a rush. And that's, our, <laughs> that's a great one. And Napoleon said that actually, and it was, I guess, his version of slow is smooth and smooth is fast, which is basically the philosophy that has guided my, my leadership and, 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 and strategy and policy here is, a step in a stitch in time saves nine. And you do it slowly. You're going to get faster at the end. And there's absolutely no doubt about that, even in this particular situation. So when you and ask I give me, you credit, credit, Peter, because as a small cap TSX venture company, mind you, you've got an $800 million mark cap. Most, even me, most CEOs would be, hey, let's get this done. It's going to be something big. Well, they're heading for the fence. And so I give you credit for, for yeah. kind of being cool hand Luke. Well, they, they, they're hitting for the fences because that's what they think they need. They're being pressured by investors. They're being pressured by stock price. They're being pressured by whatever it happens to be. But um, that, in my philosophy, that'll all work itself out. And as it has, as you can see, it has. You know, it took a long time, but people actually, uh, after some time, get it. They understand pyrogenesis a little better now. So speaking to the, the, the news release where we received a draft contract, um, I think that's very significant. Again. It doesn't guarantee that anything's going to be signed, but it does reflect the fact that we're on the right track and the parties have a goal to get to a particular conclusion with all the data that's currently available. That's key. Now, um, again, if and when a contract is signed with client A, B, or C, and for whatever amount, the fact that it is, is going to be, um, a significant um, vote of confidence in the technology and its ability, and you can then extrapolate, you know, what to what extent it can it can play a role. And it's a paradigm shift inside of iron ore pelletization that's going to officially start moving away from fossil fuels being you burned being burned in order to uh, to pelletize the iron ore and moving it to plasma torch. I mean. That pretty much signifies the entire industry. The shift is on. That's that's that's, that's massive. There's no, yeah. no. So let's. So that's the importance of to me, uh, uh, George, the fact that we have excited enough and confident enough to make a, a press release about it. Uh, I think I think it's important to do. In terms of timing, it depends. I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna just. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I know you. I know, I'm, but I've been yeah. burnt in the past, but. Uh, I, I try and give, I, I do not have right, anyways, I'm not going to talk about it. Anyway. I, I wouldn't say you were burnt, Peter, given the fact that they both came through, Mark Cap, $800 million. I think, you know, I think sometimes you're hard on yourself, and that's awesome. That's I amazing that. to see yeah. uh, from a CEO. I want to remind everyone and even touch base with you. Client B, potential client B, we should call them, and potential client C, their status. Client B has already entered into active equipment well, uh, purchase both, discussion. Both, both client B and C are paying us to do, uh, uh, no, sorry. Client B is modeling. Uh, client, client B is B modeling and has already, already entered into active equipment 
dis purchase discussions, which is a great sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Client C isn't doing modeling. They want to, they, they, you said in your last press release, they may bypass the modeling phase altogether, which to me says, holy smokes. I guess they figure if the other two are doing it, there's nothing left to see. What can you tell us about this announcement that you put out and the impact it has on moving the process along at client B and C or potential client B and C, we should call them? Um, I, I don't think about, it, it just underscores the fact that we're on the right page. And, uh, and I think the, the uh, client B and C are coming to the similar conclusions. Um, I don't think there's, well, I hope that, <laughs> I don't think they see it and they're rushing you know, to, to rushing things, things are moving very, very fast as they are with all three of them, uh, George. Um, very, 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 very fast. So I, 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 can't, I can't say more than that. I just, all right. Hey, look, like I had to say it. I had to bring it up. And I had to bring it up to status because A, current shareholders know the current status and new, new or prospective shareholders may be wondering, A, who's client B and C. By the way, for everyone at, for everyone at home, client, potential client C is, quote, a significant player in iron ore pelletization and steel. So it's almost as if you get further down the letters, they get bigger. Yeah, we're, um, we're trying to target other industries as well. We've got interest from other industries. What's interesting and what the viewers should know, we don't have a patent with respect to using our torches in other industries, but we do in iron ore pelletization, which is really, really key. Last question for you, Peter, mm. uh, because just these two, Look, if any, but if any single small cap company had just one of your verticals and global applications going, they'd be ecstatic. If they had either one of these, military, iron ore, they'd be ecstatic. You've got both and you've got others. We don't have time to get into the others. But here's the inevitable, here's the inevitable question I have to ask, which is at an $800 million market cap ballpark, right? Give or take sometimes 830, sometimes 770, but you know, let's call it 800. Uh, for this, how much longer can you put off the decision that you first announced last year that you're contemplating that you and the board were contemplating an uplist and or spin outs of one or more of these verticals that you have firing on all cylinders, pardon the pun, man, how, how much longer can you put that discussion? Uh, can, can you put that decision off for? Well, if you ask me how long I can put it off for, I can put it off forever, George. I mean, it's not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know technically, but I mean, practically speaking, though. Look, it, it's always been our position that um, the company probably belongs on, 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 a, on a different platform. Um, you know, we can't say more than that. Uh, we may have outgrown this particular one. The. Um, with respect well, I'm going to say you're NASDAQ ready. You've been NASDAQ ready for six, nine months. And I know because of clients of ours that have upgraded. So I'm going to say, I know you can't, but so, I, so I don't think, I don't think it's appropriate for me at this particular stage just to start talking about that in more detail than we have in the past, other than to say it's a logical move for a company uh, in, in our space and on the platform we are. With respect to spinoffs, I, 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 I truly believed, uh, and maybe it's my background, that we're a very complicated company understand and one of the reasons i believe that we got this uh recognition we have recently is because of covid and a lot of people who analyze companies now have the time locked up uh time on their hands to, to do the due diligence that they that that resulted in them understanding a bit of what we're doing and giving us the valuation they have now you can't rely on that forever um we have to i believe make our our offering a lot more understandable to select route like added manufacturing, mining, metallurgy, environmental. And naturally, uh, spinoffs speak to that, addressing that problem. There, there's, really no other, there's really no other way that I know of that could address that properly. Now, you have to do it at a time where you don't cripple the mother company and, and it's done properly and in the right, with the right cornerstone investments and interest. Uh, so this, this I, you, you, might, you might suggest that now, with these developments in different parts of our business, it might be uh, right to, 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 to move forward. I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue with you that. I think, I think every time we have moved forward, it has been to a more, um, 
to a more mature stage where those type of things are are more probable. I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm making any yeah. sense. Jordan. And I will add this. I will add this. Definitely, COVID gave investors the time to analyze, you know, the verticals. Just what we know here: uh, U.S. Navy, the defense side, the iron ore side, the dross right side, which you kind of touched on, the 3D printing side, the the silicon side for lithium definitely gave people that but the other advantage of uplisting is not that you have people actually taking time to look at it you have more and bigger people right so when you look at where we are now relative to where i first spoke about it we're better positioned and this gets smooth, speaks, smooth and, and, fast. and every one of my strategies that i articulate george speaks to dress with me slowly i'm in a rush speaks to Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. You don't have to do it quickly. You don't have to tick that box. You don't have to do it fast to, uh, to get there fast. You got to do it right. You got to do it right. Because we're in it for the, for the, for the, for the, we're in it for the Super Bowl, not just for the, just not for the Sunday game. And when we make decisions and we do things, we do it deliberately and we do it properly. And that's how, that's what's guided pyrogenesis. It's going to continue guiding pyrogenesis. Um, and people eventually understand what we're about and how we manage. Well, Peter, we'll end it there. Yeah, good. Congratulations <laughs> on two amazing, I mean, you've given everyone a great Labor Day kickoff. Well, there you go. Because right? here it is on Tuesday, right after Labor Day. And you've delivered two pieces of great news right before Labor Day. In fact, one on the eve of Labor Day. Congratulations to you, the team. I would ask you, hey, last word to you, what should we look forward to for the rest of the year? But that alone will take another 10 minutes because there's more, so the, more of the same that we, that we haven't changed yeah. what we're doing and we're just going to keep on adding hopefully to it and successfully. And uh, uh, I, my, my hat's off to my team who, who helped me get here and all our supporters and the people who believed in us. Thank you very much for all your emails. Um, it's good to be here now. And thanks a lot, George, for the interview. Yeah, and thanks to everyone at home who's made the Pyrogenesis Verified Forum such a great success. I mean, the quality of the discussion there is fantastic. The fact that Peter comes in and chimes in, uh, can't do it every day, all day, but just the information provides, the feedback, the engagement going on, uh, way to go, guys. Let's keep doing it because that's how you get to this, where – Peter gets a chance to go beyond press releases to speak with you. You ask intelligent questions uh, that everybody benefits from. And then when Peter gives his answers, everybody benefits from that. And it's just a fantastic, it's just a fantastic model. And I, I want to thank everyone at home who's, who's been doing that. You've been watching or if you've been tuning in by podcast and make sure uh, you add us on your podcast, whether it's Spotify, Google, Apple, or your favorite podcaster. Uh, you've been watching, listen to Peter Pascal. He's CEO of Pyrogenesis. Trades on the Venture Exchange under PYR for our friends in the U.S., PYR and F, and for our friends in Europe on Frankfurt under 8PY. Have a fantastic day. See you next time.